I have had the occasion of serving there for one year and have very nostalgic memories of that place. Now, tell me, in district Mandi Bahadeen, there is a town called Palia. Why is it called Palia? Let me give you a hint. It has something to do with Alexander the Great. So basically, uh, <clears throat> Alexander has a horse uh, that rescued Alexander from a battlefield to a safer spot. That horse name was Cephalus, and when the horse died, in the memory of that horse, Alexander has decided that he is going to mourn for three days. So that name basically Cephalus converted to Palia today. Partially correct. The name of the horse was Bucephalus. Thank you, sir. I stand corrected. And uh, they named the town Bucephalia, Bucephalia, yeah. like Westphalia in America. It got distorted over the passage of time. Bosephalia pronunciation becoming a bit difficult. So today we call it Palia. Anyway, now Lahore happens to be your favorite city. Can you name for us five or let's say six, six Mughal era buildings in Lahore? Yes, sir. For sure. Sir, uh, there are Shalamar Gardens, Sir uh, Masjid Wazir Khan, Bachai Mosque, uh, Shahi Kila. Uh, that's all I can recall for now, sir. That's all? Okay. My next question. What You have studied political science also, right? Sir. What type of government would you prefer in Pakistan? Presidential or parliamentary? And why? Sir, Pakistan being a diverse country, <clears throat> I personally believe that the parliamentary democracy is more suitable to Pakistan because the presidential system are more suitable where there are less diverse nations, for example, the United States, for example, France. Uh, but we can improve the parliamentary system in Pakistan if it is based on uh, proportional representation. So, so in, 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 in my opinion, uh, the parliamentary democracy is... Are you aware better. of the fact that Qaeda Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah preferred a presidential government for Pakistan? Uh, yes, sir, because... Uh, that was for the securing the rights of the minorities in the united india but once the india is partitioned so i believe being a diverse country parliamentary democracy is more suitable if we said this after the creation of pakistan anyway thank you sir. now ilama iqbal wrote in one of his verses jumhuriyat wo tarz e hukumat hai ke jisme bandon ko gina karte hain tola nahi karte please comment sir in this couplet basically Alama Iqbal is uh, referring to uh, the voters, the criteria of the voters, uh, basically, and, and the people who, who participate in the elections. He wants to improve the criteria for the people who vote and the people who stand in the elections. Like, for instance, at the time of Ayub, Ayub Khan, there was a system of basic democracies, 80,000, 40,000 from the East Pakistan and 40,000 from the West Pakistan. Similarly, sir, General Musharraf reduced the criteria of the at least BA degree uh, for those who are standing for the election. So these things basically elucidate that Iqbal was particularly uh, trying to improve the criteria of al El Ahlur Rai, the people who basically elect the leaders, and to some extent, the people who are going to be the leaders as well, sir. Okay, my last question, again on political science. And this concerns the great leader, Chairman Mao Zedong. Can you speak to us for two minutes on three aspects of his movement? Number one, the long march. Number two, great leap forward. And number three, his cultural revolution. Uh, well, sir, at the moment, I can't recall the nitty gritties of these three uh, events, but I can uh, explain the gist of it, if you please allow me. Uh, sir, as far as sir, the, uh, the long march is concerned, it was the march in the 1930s, which... Uh, was uh, which was around 6,000 miles where Chairman Mao and his Red Army marched against uh, the Chiang Kai-shek nationalist, uh, uh, nationalist movement and nationalist people. Uh, then coming to uh, the Cultural uh, Revolution. They didn't march against them. They were running away from them, actually. 
Thank you, sir. I stand corrected, sir. Okay, continue. Then, sir, it comes the cultural revolution that was basically to purify the communist revolution that came into the China. It was a socio-political cultural movement. Uh, but unfortunately, that includes bloodshed as well. So that is why the, most of the human rights activists uh, still condemn it. That it was more than a, more of a bloodshed than a cultural revolution. Uh, the third event, sir, uh, was the Great Leap Forward. It was about uh, <clears throat> industrial uh, plus agriculture revolution in the uh, Chairman Mao's China, where the people uh, collectively are working uh, uh, to to boost up the economy of China. But unfortunately, that landed into a mess and a lot of people died because of the drought. Do you know how many people lost their lives during the Great Leap Forward? Uh, sir, if I can make a guess, around 10 lakh people. Well, according to estimate, 30 million people died. Thank you, sir. Stand anyway, you. thank you. Over to you. America is a unique continent. A part of it is called melting pot of civilizations. And Another part is the one which cherishes ancient civilizations. Which are these two parts? Can you enlighten us on that? So these are basically North and the South Americas. So talking about the ancient civilization, we can refer to the Incas uh, of uh, Peru and uh, uh, Aztecs of Mexico, the Mayas. Uh, but as far as the Northern region is concerned, I'm sorry, I, I can't recall uh, the exact names right now, sir. Okay. You've been talking about the ancient civilizations of South America. Can you throw some light on the salient features of these civilizations? For example, Aztec and so on and so forth. Uh, so basically, these were the uh, civilizations based on the tribal system uh, that are all like I can recall for the moment, sir. Okay. Any mythological backgrounds that they had? Uh, sorry, sir. I can't recall at the moment. Okay. Okay. South America has been a popular destination destination for the adventurous nations. Sir. For example, the Europeans, they, uh, they were attracted towards uh, South America. Sir. What was the reason for that? Sir, the reason was uh, 3G, uh, which I say God, glory and gold. And primarily it was gold that was found in the Mexico mm -hmm. that attracted Spanish first and then after Spanish, <clears throat> uh, the, most of the nations followed the coast, be it the uh, Dutch or the English. So it was primarily the resources that were uh, resources of which South America. That was the primary reason for the, uh, those voyages of the European nations into the South America. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, a prominent person, later known as Kaidi Azam, uh, inspired the Muslims of India, and through his struggle and through his inspiration, got a new country for the Muslims of India. Can you talk about his leadership style? So basically, uh, Qadada Muhammad Ali Jinnah was the leader of the rights of the minorities. Up till the cabinet mission plan 1946, he was not in the favor of the partition of the subcontinent. All he wanted to was to secure the rights of the minorities in the United India. And in the famous book of Jaswant Singh, he categorically mentions that it was Nehru who created Pakistan, not Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Because all Muhammad Ali Jinnah wanted was to secure our rights. So basically, and similarly, Sir, Sir Roji Naido calls Mr. Muhammad Ali Jinnah Qadi Azam as uh, the champion of the Hindu-Muslim unity. So he was the leader of minorities. He All he wanted was to secure the rights. And he was a person who believed in the legal struggle rather than uh, the struggle of Mr. Gandhi. But, but, but to begin with his political career, he was a member of Congress and remained a member of Congress for quite a long time sure. till Gandhi replaced him. What were the reasons for that? So basically, there were two groups in the Congress. Uh, one group was that of the uh, extremist people who were who were having more tendencies towards the Hindu religion. And the other group were those of the seculars, those who believed in unity and diversity, of which Kaidazam was uh, one. So when he thought that the other group is taking hold, and uh, perhaps Mr. Gandhi is using the Hindu religion and, and, and nationalism, to propagate his cause of the freedom of India. So he, he, he then thought that perhaps uh, Congress is, has no further room for him. And said, so let me add, there was also a party known as Faraj Party, which he joined as well. Later on, which uh, Mr. Gandhi persuaded and uh, uh, the party disbanded and again became part of the Congress. 
so it was a constant journey of evolution of mohammed ali jinnah where first he was the champion of the hindu muslim unity rights of the minorities and then after seeing the uh, the behavior of the masses there he understood that only a separate homeland is the solution for the people of subcontinent we've been talking about about the leadership style of uh, mohammed ali jinnah his upbringing was there through his family must have got certain traditions but what uh, what what Uh, was the role of his education as far as making him a great leader of the subcontinent well sir he was a lawyer and as i said earlier that it was a legal battle but on the other hand when we see <coughs> mr gandhi and the people who were dominant or becoming dominant in congress that time they were not uh, uh, having that much faith in the legal battle they were going for the non cooperation movement they were going for the agitation and that is why sir when you see the <coughs> round table conferences especially the first round table conference so all of the uh, congress uh, leadership was in jails that is why that failed so basically it was the approach difference between mohammed ali jinnah and gandhi uh, that is why he, he he quit from the congress and joined muslim league sir okay thank you mr hasan ijaz sir uh, when we look at the a uh, history of economic growth in pakistan we see that uh, there have been uh, frequent rise and fall and unfortunately we have not been able to achieve sustainable growth as far as our economy is concerned can you tell us uh, certain reasons why we have not been able to achieve sustainable economic growth in pakistan Well, sir, there are two to three major major regions. But if you allow me, I would like to quote a book uh, known as "Why Nations Fail." The gist of that book is that nations fail when institutions fail, and unfortunately, our social institutions um, uh, did not perform well. That is why we are not having a sustainable economic growth in Pakistan. Uh, especially, you're talking about uh, the <clears throat> budget allocation or the resource allocation or the way we manage the money we borrow. especially and also the debt management so these are the major reasons and <clears throat> similarly if we talk about uh, the uh, internal management of the economic affairs uh, we refer about uh, we refer to the tax system so that system also needs to reform so these are the sir, uh, some reasons uh, that pakistan is not having a sustainable growth but if we work on that we can surely be on the path of sustainable growth if we look on the sidelines is there any role uh, which could have been played by the human development factor also yes sir indeed uh, that 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 can also play the part we always talk about uh, police reforms but somehow we have not been able to do any reform as far as uh, police service is concerned do you have any recommendation uh, that the police reforms which we think are essential for pakistan or punjab uh, can be implemented in some time frame well sir uh, let me add to it uh, we are on a constant journey by we i mean the punjab police or the police department is a constant journey of improvement uh, we have police order 2002 and after that police order 2002 the direction of the police department has entirely changed it was purely a law enforcement agency um, when there was no police order 2002 but after that Uh, which is which order is based on the japanese model and japanese model is all about community policing it is about engaging the community it is about accountability and that is why sir we see multiple good initiatives in the punjab police uh, almost every ig is is taking forward that community policing uh, initiative for example the police khidmat markaz for example the uh, induction of the young men and women on merit uh, be it in the front desk or uh, or the upper subordinate level so there is a room for improvement but we are improving so i am very much plausible and hopeful when it comes to punjab police okay let me give you one and a half minute uh, just describe the personality of hitler so as far as hitler is concerned say he was a fascist leader who believed in fascism fascism came from the mussolini uh unfortunately today we see many leaders following his course not entirely but when it comes to the way of their politics the passion of their politics the, the totalitarian approach where they believe that one party should control everything and that party shouldn't be criticized or the one leader should shouldn't be criticized so we are unfortunately moving towards populism and the, and the cult politics and that was perhaps the epicenter of the hitler's politics 
and that is very unfortunate situation in the in the current scenario and what is the name of the book that he wrote uh, i have read that but unfortunately i can't recall the name sir I... mein kampf which means my struggle right sir sir thank you very much hasan sir since you had political science to a few questions from that subject can you please name the countries that still have a functional monarchy uh, yes sir there are uh, quite a few countries uh, they have different models of constitutional monarchies they have uh, of monarchies they have constitutional monarchies they have pure monarchies and they have constitutional religious monarchies for example when we talk about the constitutional religious monarchy we have malaysia when we talk about constitutional monarchy we have uh, united kingdom then the whole arab world especially saudi arabia uae oman qatar they are all the monarchies all right again another question from political science there is a proclamation with regards to british constitutional conventions the king is dead long live the king can you please talk about it sir i am not exactly sure about this but uh, i i i can share what I, what i know in this regard uh, sir it basically explain that it is not the person who is being obeyed it is the office of the crown so if one king or the crown is is gone the other one will, will replace him so basically it is about the replacement of the uh, office of the crown by one office bearer uh, to to another basically one king is replacing the other one what is the concept of dual citizenship in united states of america uh, sir it basically refers to the dual nationality or the dual citizenship of the citizen of america they hold the citizenship of their respective state as well as they hold the citizenship of the united states of america and as far as my knowledge is concerned sir uh, i believe it was uh, this principle was established to maintain uh, the unique identity or the entity of those early 13 states that founded the united states of america uh, for example sir they have separate flags they have separate emblems so th- so these th- this is the reason uh, behind this dual citizenship thing sir you had gender studies as well as one of your optional subjects what are your views about the aurat march so aurat march is basically a uh, a fourth wave feminist approach where they are using the technology for the mass mobilization for the sake of the rights of the women it is a good march as far as the human rights is concerned every march for the human rights is a good march but we can improve it it badly needs to be inclusive because it is seen that only a certain class of the women participate and organize in these marches we rarely see the women from the religious backgrounds or the rural backgrounds so it would be much better if they make it more inclusive so their strategies can improve and perhaps they can serve better the cause of uh, human rights when it comes to the women and feminism given your background of police hasan what is the section 376 of pakistan penal code So the section 376 of the Pakistan Penal Code basically refers to the rape rape laws sir. And since you also had gender studies how do you see the issue of victim blaming? Uh, so unfortunately I can I can quote example from my department uh, where a woman uh, was raped was gang gang raped at uh, Shalkot motorway uh, that junction of Ring Road and Shalkot motorway and unfortunately a senior officer blamed that lady that perhaps she was responsible for that very event and it is not only that officer it is it is it has become a general phenomena where women are being blamed due to their character i would like to add a ruling of high court where a senior justice said that you cannot judge a woman because of her character that she has xyz character so that is why you should be dealing her in xyz way no matter what the woman is she is a woman first even if she is uh, a prostitute or a quote in quote modest woman you have to treat both of them equally when it comes to law how can we deal with this problem how can we change the mindset so we badly need to educate the masses and we have to engage all of our social institutions which include primarily family uh, uh, educational institutions uh, political institutions economic institutions so all the institutions if they work coherently so we can tackle with this issue but it is going to take time Can you please name the countries that are a part of European Union and not NATO? Sir, I'm not sure, but uh, I guess there are six countries out of 27, 28 member states which are not part of NATO. Uh, I can recall three names at the moment, sir. It is Finland, it is Ireland, it is Austria. Uh, that's all, sir. 
All right, Hassan. My last question to you. Can you please apprise me of any other name of Quran e Pak? Uh, so to my, my knowledge, it is known as Al Al Furqan. Do you know its meaning? Uh, sorry, sir. I don't know, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, D. Now that the interview is over, what are your views about the candidate? Sir, so first about his strengths. He is very well dressed, quite composed. Uh, during the interview, stress absorption was also quite good. Uh, his weaknesses, hands movement were there. Monotony of voice was also there. So these were the negatives that he had. Uh, what else uh, can I suggest to him? Or what else did I observe? Energy level has been an issue with him. Although he was talking and he was talking almost relevant, still at times the energy level went down. I don't know why. I don't know why. So that, that really was a problem with him. What else? Um, he's been speaking and speaking for a while. He had the uh, good knowledge, he had good knowledge base. Should have exploit, exploited uh, his level, uh, his knowledge base in a better way. Should have taken more time to talk at length Express and, speech. that's right, and, and impress the people sitting on this side of the chair. But he didn't avail that opportunity. Although I think the impression is that he got uh, some knowledge with him. He got the information. But he has not been able to explain it. Wait. Okay. Hassan Javed, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Hassan uh, Iqbal, sir. Uh, smart young man. Very well dressed. And to start with, maybe he was not all that confident. But uh, in due course, he uh, had a lot of uh, confidence. And he spoke very well. He had good communication skills. Though uh, his voice could have been a little more assertive. And uh, he could have spoken in a little more uh, louder voice. Uh, overall appearance very good. He was very well composed and uh, 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 he could sustain pressure also. A uh, lot many questions were asked from him outside even his uh, domain or uh, the knowledge at level he is. But he I think attempted the questions uh, very well. And even if he could not attempt a question, uh, still his confidence level remain till end, uh, though some uh, energy level at some level. But I think uh, during such interviews, definitely you have to look at the candidate, uh, his age, his level, uh, and uh, a panel of uh, the sort which he was, he appeared. I think that things uh, definitely uh, we have to uh, understand that. Thank you. Thank you. Usman. Yes, sir. So I see him as a bright candidate, although he did not start like really well. He appeared a little nervous, but as the interview progressed, I think he regained, sir. And owing to his background of police, sir, which I have noticed notice kiye, and public dealing at the grassroots level, sir, he is quite confident and composed. I found good conversational ability in him. Yes, at times he was, he talked monotonous or monotone delivery, sir, dekhi gaye. but overall, he even jin questions which sir ke abhi hasan sahab ne kaha bhi ke where he did not have sufficient knowledge even those he handled well sir so overall i think that he is he, sh he should prove to be a good inclusion in service sir i think ke he merits good. an allocation thank sir. you meri jo pehli observation hai his body language was impressive that is the first thing that the panel sees when a candidate enters the room in the beginning, I agree with you. He, at least when I was questioning him, he was a bit nervous. He couldn't even answer the simple question about the six buildings of Mughal era in Lahore. But uh, that is natural. It is expected from most candidates. But as the interview progressed, his composure and confidence returned. He regained that. And then he spoke well on some issues. Kuch pe nahi bol saka cha, but generally he spoke well. And I think he has a good potential, reasonable knowledge base, good potential. But one thing I would have preferred had he spoken loudly, still more loudly and clearly. 
But having said that, I think he has good potential and should rank amongst the, should be able to uh, get, place himself amongst the first three, four service group. Sir, I think his background is sir, police, ki, jo public dealing, ki hai, that is very valuable, sir. Ye, jis ki situation he was performing, sir, I think ke, he performed well. And the service will definitely be definitely in the service. Yes, it will be fine. This is the public dealing at the grassroots level, no matter what group you he is. Do you agree gets. with what I said? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.